I went to Adidas Nations going into my senior year after I just came off a phenomenal junior year. Phenomenal junior year. I put the word on notice this year, but still I ain't getting that recognition or whatnot. I go to Adidas Nation and- This is a camp, I take it. This is one of the top camps in the world here in LA. This is the crazy part, I'm in LA. And at this camp, we there for four days. When I say, when I got going into the season, I went, I came here and wreaked havoc because nobody knew me. It was only one person that knew me because he was in my conference and it was Isaiah Cannon, which is one of my close friends. He was the only person that knew me because me and him were the top dogs in our league. So he knew who I was. Oh, and my boy, Ed Daniel. So it was three of us. And they these, knew these are, these are from at this and these nations. They went to Murray State. Okay. Murray? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They knew who I was because they battled me for the last three years. Yeah. Nobody else knew me. Not even the people that, the, the coaches, the, the, nobody. When it came out, going into the senior year, after that camp, I went from being unknown to one of the top 10 power forwards in the country. In the country for every school. That's crazy. And I was number six. Oh, that's crazy. So I go, y'all tell, telling me that. Super crazy. You went crazy the oh, camp, sure. I showed everything. And they was like, hold on, who the hell is this kid? So going into my senior year, you st I'm starting to see my name. Mock drafts. Late first. The highest I was was 18. Guess what I was going to? Yeah. The Bulls. Mm. You had me like, oh, going to the crib. Going to the crib. Like, my dad had this stuff screenshotted. My mom, yeah. all my family was sending me, like, yo, like, man, all that recognition. So, starting into my senior year, things don't really happen because we had a coaching transition. My coach, that was one of the assistants, he became the head coach, changed the whole narrative. We literally just had, we had the same team. We went to the OVC championship. We lost by two points because we got cheated. Lost by two points. We had the same team. All we had to do was keep our same dynamic, but he wanted to change everything. As he said, he wanted to keep his own DNA. Hmm. We had the team. Like, we literally had the team to go back to the championship. Messed all that up. We play in Middle Tennessee State, December 17th, three days after my birthday. We're getting our ass whooped against this team. When we make a run, they make a run. The closest we got was 18. The highest def deficit we was facing, 34. Mm. Like, coach, it's game over with. Like, put the, take us out, like, let's, we gotta get ready for, he was like, nah, nah. We ain't, we ain't, gonna, we ain't gonna throw in the white flag. Coach, we not winning this game. Put the, put the guys that's not playing in. Nah, nah. 49.8 seconds. We still in the game. We down 22. I just go randomly just try and set a screen. This dude drops his shoulder. Right into my knee. Right into my knee. My knee went just like this. I felt, I felt snap. Instant hit. Oh, it's over with. I fell. Knee throbbing. Tore my meniscus. Draft stock went from damn near lottery, non-existent. They told me I was gonna be out eight weeks. Me being mentally strong, I came back and forth. My body healed because it was like, nah, it ain't I, you got it's a purpose. Like, nah, I'm not finna do this. You didn't work yourself up for this moment. Nah, I ain't finna. So they wrote me off. They said, nah, he ain't gonna be able to do it. Da da da. I can't. I got hurt December 17th. I was back. January 31st. January 31st, I was back. I played six games at the end of my senior year. In them six games, I did enough. So now we get a champion. We get into a conference. We lose to Belmont, which go on to win the conference. And I'm like, all right. So now I'm starting to prepare for the draft. Like everybody's like, oh no, I signed with this small agency. 
that it wasn't getting done. So this is when I knew like the politics of stuff, politics of the business. Mm -hmm. You had a white agent, you had a black agent. I was with the black agent. They had another player, Nate Walters, with the white agent. Now Nate Walters is at all the, the IMG, the fancy facilities, everything. Me, they sent me to Atlanta to go work with this Rinky Dink trainer. I, if I can, I literally went to this trainer and I literally was playing against competition. I could tell these dudes exactly what I'm about to do and still be able to do it. I'm not getting better here. Yeah. And you talking about I'm preparing for the draft? The agent that I was with, this man told me, he was like, man, because of, because of where you went and the things that are up against you, I think we got to get you between 18 and 20 workouts. I said, are you out your fucking mind? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, nah, that don't sound right to that me. That sounds crazy. Sound right, it's 30 teams. You talking about 18 to 20? Yeah. Nah, you need to sit up here and figure out what, who needs what and what situation I would fit best in. Yeah. Those are teams I need to go work for. Because even if I don't get drafted, I still yeah. put the bug in the ear. Yeah. So I'm like, so I'm in the process of like, I'll end up firing him. The reason why I fired this man, I found out through Twitter, I got invited to the draft combine through Twitter. That's wild. I was a late entry because some people dropped out. So I'm like, he calls me later, hey man, what's up man, I got good news. I'm like, what's up? You follow me? He's like, what's up? He's like, what's I'm like, what's up? He's like, no, no, let's meet for dinner. Da da da. I wanna uh wanna break, I wanna get I wanna hand it to you. I'm like, okay. So we go to dinner, he's like, man, what's up, dog? I just wanna tell you, man, like, it's a great day. I'm like, what's up? He's like, huh? So I open the letter, read it. I was like, oh, I already knew that. He's like, huh? I seen that three hours ago. Before you called me, I seen that on Twitter. That's when I knew, that, that was second strike. Yeah. Then once all this other stuff go, you don't even, you, you fly literally, when I go to the combine, you fly your whole team out. And I'm in the process of like transitioning and they're trying to get me or whatnot. So they were starting to rack up charges and everything like, then they try to get me to pay for it. I didn't tell y'all to come to the combine. I didn't tell none of y'all to. And you think that I'm gonna pay for this? That was it. That was it. Hmm. So I literally went to combine, got back on the map. So people like, oh shit, I went with the fours. They like, oh, he can shoot. He versatile, like he can do this. Mm -hmm. mm. I sit up here and I get to, uh, I get to doing the testing and stuff. I do the stress echo test, man my test come back red flat. So I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Stress echo test, is that for like that's the running? Things? That's the running test, where you running on the treadmill and it's the incline. Got it. I'm like, they talk to the doctors. It's eight doctors come talk to me. Got it. They was like, yeah, son. I don't think you should play basketball no more. I'm like, what you mean? They was like, yeah, your, your test came back red flat. I'm like, what you mean? They was like, well, from what that means, you got an enlarged heart. And you, like, that's a, that's a, sh a warning. And that's a, a precautionary thing for basketball because at any moment, yeah. you can drop. Dude in Boston, what was his name? Um, Reggie Lewis. Reggie Lewis, yeah, yeah. Reggie Lewis, Slim Bias. Yeah. Listen, yeah. one of my close friends did the same thing, died for Grand Rapids. Just drop, just drop. So I'm like, oh, shh. So now basketball is like, that, that just got taken from me. Like with no, yeah. some didn't sit well with me. Some just sit well. Everybody around me is like devastated. But I'm like, my agent called me. He was like, man, how you feeling? I said, I'm good. Like, you know, it just wasn't meant to be. He's like, nah, man, it just don't, some just don't feel. I said, don't, but I don't, what can I do? Like, you can't mess with that. He was like, nah, I, I can't, I can't, it just don't sit with me. So I went and got a, a second, second opinion. opinion. Yeah. Turns out the machine I was on was broken. Okay. 
I thought I knew the coach. Yeah. I knew the coach would be seven great coach. <laughs> seven great coach, I got old well, machine. Like, the, the machine. The machine was broken. The person that was on it before was too big, so it was fucking up the the calibra calibration very So you just, you supposed to be here, period. Period. You supposed to be So here. I literally go, combine, the, the draft is in three weeks. For two and a half weeks, straight, I was working out for teams. Every other day I was in a different city. I had 10 workouts. Every other day I was in a workout. Tired than a motherfucker. But I went through every workout and did my thing. So come draft night, Oh, I, I literally my last my last workout was the day of the draft in Cleveland. Do you feel Do you feel leading up to that evening? Do you feel like your name's gonna be called? Cause it's only two rounds, right? It's two yeah. rounds, sixty it's two players. Rounds. Did you feel like your name was gonna? I be thought called? that I would, and okay. then this is the ironic part. So the day of the draft, I'm sitting here with my family. My family threw me a draft party. My agent heard a lot of good news and everything, but I'm like I'm still skeptical. Like I don't know. It just like all the things is up against me, and I'm this at this point like that's when I'm starting to weigh in on like man maybe I won't get drafted. Da, da, da. So the first round goes, second round starts. Do you know who got picked that year in the first round? Like, yes, I do. Top, who's the top pick that year? Anthony Bennett. Ooh, Anthony Bennett from Cleveland. For, he's from uh, Toronto. Canada. He's from Canada. Yeah, yeah. Fuck the oh, whole. Play for the Cavs, though. Like, Messed the whole, yeah, the whole draft up. Yeah, he did. Messed the whole draft up. He ain't. Did he play? It don't matter. Anyway. Listen. <laughs> Messed the whole draft up. So listen though. With all of that said, again, you're here. You're sitting here, and it's due to resolve. You know what I mean? Like you have this resolve. You have yeah. This resiliency. That's why I got um, a tattoo on my finger. You, 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 you're, you're in an industry that, you know, like the music business, I think film and television, you have these dynamic personalities, right, that run these studios or in your situation, you, you know, Rob is, he's, that, he's the guy, right? He's got the big deal. For sure. Well, the so sure. how, like, how have you, um, been able to like he's been able to stay in the league ten years. You've been like you said, this is this is year eleven, right? Yeah. What are the things that what are the things that you hold close to you, so that you can navigate? You know what I mean? Navigate and stay in because you got to stay in the game, right? To yeah, create so opportunities. For sure, uh, I think um, on a small like surfacey level, when it came to ridiculousness, I'll start there. For me, I, I looked at it and, and, and I became a producer season two mm. because season one I was there and I'm just a person, I'm gonna be around some shit. I wanna know how it's working. I wanna be able to add to it. I wanna be able to say, hey, we should do this thing versus this thing. Early on, we wouldn't even watch the videos. We don't, I don't watch the videos anymore. I haven't watched them in like six years probably now. But early on, when we were trying to figure out the show, we weren't watching videos or anything. We were just kind of literally freestyling, going out there freestyling. And I told Rob, like, yo, uh, I don't think on ESPN they watching it and being like, back, back, back. Yeah, that shit went out. Yeah, it really went out. <laughs> like, I think they kind of know beforehand what's going on. I think it might help us a little better to be a little better prepared um, for it. He was like, I don't know. It might take away the, the organicness of what we got going on. I was like, maybe. And tested it out one day. I asked him, can I get the clips beforehand? Cause I'm also controlling the clips. Uh, people think for whatever reason it's fake, but I'm really controlling the clips. But uh, um, I asked him beforehand, I came in the next day, I, I murdered, killed it. And he was like, all right. From there, uh, I became a writer on, on the show, season two as well, just to like help with the comedic timing and different things. I was like, oh, this could be funnier. I would write him jokes. He would always joke with me and say, we just use, if you come to a tape and they're like, you just use your laughs under my jokes anyway, so we don't fucking care. Uh, <laughs> Which, <laughs> but for me, I was like, it's, it's about playing a role in any of it. You know, that's what uh, sports does for you is allow you to go into any situation and be like, all right, what role, what hole can I fill? Wow. Like, you know, if you're talking about television and film, I just signed my production deal with Paramount Plus. I look at it and I'm like, okay, well, from a streaming standpoint, anything I want to do, I'm going to fucking, 
you know, really just become a student of it. So I'm like, from a streaming standpoint, I look at Netflix, I look at Hulu, I look at these different things and say, well, we got to fill these holes of like, what's working over here? If it's dating shows, if it's this, if it's that, like, okay, well then I should be writing things along those lines that I can produce things that I know will fill these holes. So it was the same thing with ridiculousness. I was like, you know what? You guys aren't using my long-winded stuff. I'm probably gonna be better if I find moments in this. If I find little moments and say, okay, well, let me stop on this little moment and I'll have a joke, a little small joke right here or give you a, a zinger, as the hills say, a little zinger, because I know that you'll have to keep me in then. You'll have to keep me into the edit because I'm doing quick, these quick jokes that are hitting hard yeah. versus this long-winded thing. So I think in any of it, it's just about uh, looking at the market and, and, and looking at holes and say, okay, well, if I'm gonna keep doing this, what are people lacking or, or what storytelling, what, what story is adding to it? Because in all of it, the, 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 the fans now and the, the consumer now and the audience now, they can see bullshit. It's, it's, they have too much access to us to not be able to, to see bullshit. Uh, so it's just about being yourself and seeing how you can tell that story the best way possible, for me, honestly. Yeah, adding to your tool belt too. Yeah. Every year. That's crazy. So, um, Question, are y'all sweeping the Lakers this year? Man, that's, 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 the, the, that's the plan. Like, well, you excited about this upcoming year, man? We start off with them. So you know you know what's going to happen with the amount of the... Is that in a week? Yeah. It's Tuesday, right? Or next yeah, it's a week today. I always, I always know it's like close to Halloween is the beginning of the NBA season. I mean, now that they didn't moved it up, yeah. And... You know the anticipation of what they turn up for talking about. They like, who gonna be the king of LA? Like that, they trying to set the foundation early. So, yeah. I mean, we know we we know we gonna be ready. So it's just a matter of when we come out that opening night, we set the tone from the tip. I think y'all better team for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Here y'all go. No, that's that's somebody's yeah. opinion. That's, I actually believe they're a better team for sure. Yeah, on paper, it's, it's we yeah. much we much more dynamic and we have much more like Arsenal, like than a lot of teams. And that's what's gonna make us that much scarier than everybody. Um, going into your 10th year, who, who have been a, a few of the players that have really like, again, wrapped their arms around you and, and been like, you know. Whose rookie are you? Man, my rookie, uh, my rookie year, I was Dwight Howard, Francisco Garcia, James Harden, Ronnie Brewer, uh, I yeah. 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 Uh, those are my, but the guy that I re that really took me around, like, and really taught me a lot was Francisco Garcia. Like, he was the first one that kind of gave me that foundation, like the ins and outs of the league. And what team was this? Houston. Rockets. Okay. Yep. Okay. The Rockets. Houston. Okay. So he was he was him first. Then when I got to Philly, it was Jason Richardson, Carl Landry. Jay Rich. Yep. Jay Rich. I just hooped with Jay Rich at district. <laughs> Man, and then seeing him still doing what he doing at, at his age is like, he nice, silly. You silly. Ain't, he ain't seen him in big three. Like, yeah, Jay Rich, I'm Jay Rich okay. still punch. Yeah. <laughs> Michigan State boy, right? Yep. Yeah, he is. Okay. But yeah, then, um, then after that, I became the vet in my third, fourth year. Like, I was one of the oldest people on the team. Who was your rookie? Jaleel Okafor, TJ McConnell, and B. Ben Simmons, uh, who else? Dario Sarge, um, Tim Luwawu, Cabrero. Yeah, I, I like that team. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah that, I was, like that, that team. That team was nice. Yeah. Man, Jaleel, man. Jaleel. Yeah, when the young came right? from me Chicago, like the, the league yeah. changed on him. Yeah, the and, league and, changed. And if him. He, he was because he was like him. he was he was more traditional. But Back score, against, yeah, no defense yeah. though, but the score dude, that thing, like a month. Yeah, he Listen, when I say dude. if he would have been in the 2000, 2010 area, he oh. would have been a problem. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. the way that the, the way that the game transitioned, it was like he wasn't able to keep up. Yeah. He was a step too late. And when I say had, I watched that one is. of the greatest battles in practice once. Like Joel and B versus Jaleel Okafor for 10 minutes straight. Them two, we playing five on five. They went at each other for literally ten minutes. Yo, I heard the practices be crazy. What? Listen, I had never seen about. It. it was literally to the point where we would literally bring the ball up, throw it in the post. Everybody space. 
Damn, like we watching this Clash of the Titans. <laughs> that literally, that literally that's is exactly all, that's what all it was. Yeah. Because you gotta think. Number three versus number three. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, three versus three. Yeah. They had a they basically had to establish who was gonna be the guy. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you, I was like, man, for ten minutes straight, dog, we literally watched this practice go. Act like we in the play. <laughs> Throw right to the right to the post. One on one. Go you, right you, ahead. You can tell this dude is a big sports fan. Oh yeah, hey. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Nice, man. I'm trying to come at me like that, man. I'm yes. nice out there. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. I was gonna do because I'm a person who's a dreamer as well. Uh, as a joke, I, I was talking about doing a uh, a fake uh, year of me just shooting a fake documentary of me going to the league, trying to put my name into the draft. I know I'm gonna make it. But the whole point of it was to just show people that you can do anything you want to do in life. Anything you want to do in life, exactly. man. Yeah, so I'm nice like that. That's, but I, like I said, it's year 10. I, I've, I've seen a lot of great players, play with a lot of great players. Uh, who's like just throwing their arms around you, taught you a lot. You know what I mean? You know you can pick up the phone and call them. And the advice that you're going to get on, that, on the other end of the phone is very sound. And, and very um is there a coach that you have like in yeah. that during your nba span that you like oh that he's you probably the best about, mentor yeah. even lloyd, if it wasn't lloyd pierce lloyd pierce lloyd pierce is the person that made me who i am in the league because a strong brett, brett, brett yeah, brown, no lot. no seriously brett brown was gave me when i got to philly brett brown told me he was like son you can shoot you can shoot the lights out of the ball but if you can't guard nobody, you ain't gonna stick in this league. And for literally three years, me and Lloyd, Lloyd was my player development guy. For three years straight, Lloyd turned me into the defensive player I am. Mm. By the drills, the work ethic, the film sessions, the amount of people that he had me watch. I watched Scottie Pippen, Kawhi, uh, That's a great film. Danny Flash. Green, Bruce Bowen, um, Matt Barnes, uh, who else was great? Sean Mary, yeah. all these great defenders, all these great and defenders. All like your size six seven, six eight, exactly. Yeah. long, exactly. Yeah. Intentional with the with the training. Like yeah. they knew I had great hand speed, but literally, the guy that helped me take my my literally my anticipation and my instincts to another level was our trainer, Ty Wright. He had started in the weight room and transitioned on the court. Literally every day we watch film and then we would do something to simulate game life situation. Whether it's me guarding for X amount of seconds, then run to the corner and go to three. Or going the length of the court, like doing it down and back, and then come and shoot a couple of threes, then have to go guard uh, him in a certain setting, then I gotta run on the other side. Like just simulating like game life situations. That's what made me who I am. And for three years straight, that was our routine. When he left, it was like the next coach that stepped up, he tried to fill that void. Now you can't fill that void. Like, it's, so, you can't. Not to cut you up. So you, same thing, like, you, you know, again, you came in with Rob, right? Mm-hmm. This unexpected phone call, this mm-hmm. blessing. And um, now season 11, and again, who is it? Because I'm sure you're trying to, you know, you, you grow in a vertical, you grow in the IP, you grow in as a man. Who are you talking to? I'm sure your parents, but who are you talking to outside of that to help you to make sure that you, you know, you're doing the right things, you're staying true, you're staying authentic, you're building correctly? Like, like an A&R, I'm, I'm probably always, always sourcing, depending on the, the situation. I'm okay. probably saying, okay, well, this person is probably more versed in this situation mm-hmm. than this person. So um, a couple yeah. people. Yeah, like so. So, so Rob, somebody. Um, I, I know I could always if it really got for real TV and film. Mike, I could always call Mike B. Jordan. Like, I know like different people I could pull on to be like, all right, I gotta. But I feel like I just pick up everybody. You know, for okay. me, like that's more of my style. My therapist, I use her a lot. But a lot of therapy. Yeah, shout out there. Shout out there. <laughs> um, sure. My, and my girl, but my, yeah, my parents are definitely still probably those foundations for me. Like my my dad is somebody I know. I could call my brother again, somebody I know. I could call 
and they're the ones that are gonna hold me accountable and be like, you know, and they don't always um, necessarily have insight on different business things. Chad, Chad Easton and somebody I know I can call as well, one of my really good friends, if it's some business stuff. So yeah, it just depends on the thing. Yeah, if it's art, if it's this, if it's that, it's just a different person. By the way, for each- he got the most fire art collection. <laughs> He's my art muse, like, that's right. who I need to talk to for when I get my crib. Like, right baby. here. I got you. Right here. I promise. I want to make a whole black fund for art. I promise. Yeah. We got to put him and Khalil together. No, seriously. Like, you I, know Khalil, I, right? I, I, I watch and I, he puts me on. Like, I'll go and, and I've, I've learned about so many new up and coming, especially black artists from from him. Didn't even know that. Mike, I appreciate so we, that. That's what I'm doing it for. We had a. Khalil Kinsey on okay. the Kinsey collection, which is on exhibit at SoFi right now. Um, that was, uh, you know, um, curated by the parents and Khalil, who's one of our boys from out here in LA, but you guys should definitely know each other. Cause that's another thing that happens on here usually is we've been building community, like just people meeting each other and then relationships developing. And it's like, hey, we should do this together. So I'm glad, I'm glad, yeah, we should definitely introduce sure. you to Khalil. Also, you, 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 you spoke about therapy. Um, there, we talked about that right before the camera started rolling. For you, therapy and why? What, why is it, why is it so, it, it's so essential to you? Well, I joked and said that earlier that just from us being black in this country, we need therapy just from all the hurt that we went through to understand a lot of things. It's, it's all about just you working through things. Like we said, like it's going to the gym for your brain. So it's like that mental exercise you need, but it's understanding why you process things certain ways. It's understanding why you are certain ways. It's different uh, uh, um, generational curses that you may not even understand, that you may be trying to break. And like, so for me, just to be able to talk those things out with someone that's not biased and be like, oh, okay, I know this is from a pure perspective of being like, hey, well, could that thing make you feel this way? Being able to feel as well. Uh, I think I think us being black men within America, a lot of times we're not taught how to feel. Yep. Like to, to simply to be able to process emotions and stuff. You look at it as a sign of weakness almost, you know, as you grow up as a kid. like. My dad, I remember him not crying until I was, I think, 13 years old. My grandma passed away, and that was my first time I saw him cry. And that's why I'm going to cry again when he uh, 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 got saved over again. And I was like, this nigga doing this nigga. Over here crying. I, I was throwing off about this nigga. I was like, this nigga lied to me all these years. Nigga like, can process tears. Uh, uh, but, but, but for me, the, like, I'm able to live, and at this sacrifice, I'm able to live in a way more free space than my parents was and my dad was. So I think therapy has helped me understand even, you know, we just, I joke with him and say, you know, we do essentially live, you do live forever. You live forever to me. I'm just trying to be a better version of you. The more and more I look at you, I'm like, oh shit, I'm just you. I see what you fucked up right there and right there. If I could do this thing different and do this thing over here, I'd probably be a better version of you. So I think therapy has just allowed me to really tap into all that stuff and to, to not and to also realize when you've hurt people as well. And like and being hurt able people, to hurt people. Yeah, right? for sure. And then you know, and, and and I don't think I always process things as hurt people. I it was on my podcast not too long ago, and I know me myself having the mouthpiece I have and being like a comedic dude. I probably heard a whole bunch of people in high school and shit just from being funny, roasting my fuckers. But it, to the degree, I'm like, man, you you just didn't process a lot of these things the way that you would now. So I think it's just helped me um, become a better version of myself. Self-realization. So uh, therapy for you. Saved my life, dog. Like, 2019 is the first time I really realized, like, all the stuff that I was carrying. Like. I, we all familiar with the movie Get Out, right? Mm-hmm. Chris, when that lady sat up here and took that thing and she did it, and he fell into that trance, I felt like that. Like, and I felt like I couldn't get out. Like, everything was going wrong. My relationship at the time was rocky. I just got traded to Minnesota after Philly told me, you're a vital part to this organization, you're part of our future. They traded me three weeks later. Then, once I get there, 
I make immediate impact on this team. Minnesota, we go 22 and eight before I leave, before I get hurt. I got hurt New Year's Eve, New Orleans. So I'm working my way back, bone bruise. And no, I don't know what bone bruise is. We, I'm thinking that you know, we get bone bruise all the time. We keep pushing, yeah, but sure. it's days I can't get, I can't walk. Like I get out the bed, I'm like, the hell? Yeah. And I literally can't walk. Like I had to literally get my way to my car, like taking my dog out, everything. They gave me a target return day, March 14th. It's March. Second, I go down to G League for three days. I go down to G League three days. I have phenomenal three days. I'm looking like back to myself. I go home to my ex, and it was my ex's uh, son's birthday. And I went home because the team was on the road. And I literally, they was like, don't do nothing. Just put on your sleeve, relax, don't do nothing. I do exactly that. I did overboard. I did recovery, I had my Norma tech, I had my game ready, took all this stuff with me, just to be precautionary. I go back home to Minnesota, two days later, once the team back, I wake up next morning, my knee is like this. I can't even see my knee. Swelling everything. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? So I go to the trainers, everybody panic, like, man, what the fuck did you do like that? I ain't do nothing. I told y'all what I did. Y'all literally just FaceTime me at home, sitting on the couch with my knee sleeve on and my fucking normal jacket and getting ready on. So they was like, all right. So then I had to go get an MRI. My first MRI didn't tell me nothing because there was too much fluid in there. So they drained the fluid, drained the fluid, and got another MRI. Before they got the MRI, my knee swelled up during the MRI. Knee swelled up during the MRI. So then they had to drain my knee again. Then they had to put this plasma in my knee, which burned like hell. Yeah. To find He's out to, me. To, <laughs> to find out what exactly was wrong. And come to find out, I told my meniscus again. For the third time, same knee. Shit. So I'm like, so they was like, all right, yeah, you done for the season. I'm like, mind you, all this other stuff going on. Mind you, me and my mom was into it over situation I was in. They had, it was rocky, you know, we didn't have our moments of so much stuff from the previous season in, in, in Philly. So it's a lot of stuff. Plus trying to figure out my ex, like her next step and what she wanted to do because she stopped working. She was a, a bottle girl before and she stopped working. She wanted to do something else because it was instant to happen. And I'm like, look, that ain't it no more. Like we gotta, we gotta figure out the next steps in life. So trying to help her figure out then when my, my other people, like my, my homeboys and my other family members, like carrying everybody else's burdens. That's, mm -hmm. that was, that's my biggest attribute and that's my biggest flaw is that I try to carry everybody's burdens yep. and try to be the problem solver for everybody. Yep. And sometimes you can't do that. And with me dealing with all the stuff I was dealing with in turn, like all I, I just felt like this. Cup, yeah, cup is empty trying to pour into others in. None of that stuff set up for me. It got to a point where, like, mentally I was gone. Like, and I was so far gone that my ex's son used to bother me. And he ain't doing nothing being a child. He running in the house, playing around, doing his stuff. It got to a point where I didn't even want them around. I sent them home. I sent them home. When I had surgery April 1st, I had nobody around me. I'm on crutches. And I got a big-ass fucking dog that's 122 pounds. Jesus that I'm taking out on crutches, walking. But the, the one thing that I can say about this process, my dog knew something was wrong and my dog didn't make it hard for me at all. I could take this mug out on my crutches. I didn't even have to put him on a leash. He never left my side. Whenever I'm on the couch, laying down by my side, in the bed, sitting on my side of the bed, never left my side. I'm sitting up here like, man, it's just something don't feel right. They Some don't feel it. Like. That's what's crazy. They do. And so when I did all that, it got to a point where the incident happened before when I told y'all that, you know, before I had the surgery, is I went into the office and I told them like, hey, I don't I feel bad. I'm not feeling too good today. Like I just wanna get in, get out, get my They didn't listen to me, and that's when I snapped. 
So I had a talk with my uh, coach at the time, and he was like, man, you know, I understand when you're going through something, you're going through a lot. Like, I can tell just by your demeanor, you've changed. So he was like, he recommended therapy, Ryan Saunders. And I'm like... Flip Saunders, his son. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm like, um, therapy is what's going to do for me. But it's like a series of events kept happening to the point where it's like, all right, I can give this a try, but if, like, if it don't work, like, cool. I'm still going to be in the same spot. Like, and I figure something else out. But if it do, that's a plus. So literally, I go to talk to this therapist. They know this man from Can of Paint. I couldn't even look this man in the eye. That's how much weight I was carrying. I, I'm looking down. How much down. pain you in? I couldn't even look this man in the eye. Because we don't want to cry, right? Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't look this man in the eye. This nigga, man. So all of this, Back all questions. of this stuff that's going on, like I couldn't look this man in the eye. And we literally it's supposed to be a one hour session. That shit turned into four and a half hours. I unpacked so much and I didn't even realize half the stuff I was dealing with. It go back mm -hmm. to childhood. The relationship I had with my real father, the, the relationship I had with the people that I grew up with, the surroundings I had, like being an introverted kid and like being scared all the time, like you used to have to fight for no reason. It's to the point where I used to get chased home from a new environment. My mom seen me running home one day to a point where she told me, look, what are you, what, what are you running home for? I was like, man, they, they, they trying to jump me. She said, if you don't stand your ground, she was like, you got two choices. Either you stand there and get your ass whooped, or you gonna come home and get your ass whooped. Which one you think gonna be worse? My mama's 6'1". She ain't no small woman. I'd rather stand up. Them seven motherfuckers that trying to jump me than that swooping from her. My ass whooping must hurt. <laughs> I ain't going home with that shit. And I used to be a bad kid back in the day. Like, it was to a point where I was immune to them. I was a mute. My mom would literally sit there and whoop me, and I wouldn't even be phased. That was when I was back in the city, like them environments. But when I changed, and when I got to a new environment, that all that shit changed. Them feelings came back. Mm -hmm. But it got to a point, like I said, fast forward. I started unpacking stuff, unpacking stuff. So we went through four sessions. I literally in four sessions, I logged 21 hours with this dude. Four sessions. Cause you've been holding on to a lot. Hold on dude. to a lot, and every Long time, time, every time I released energy. I was able to sit up here and went from this to sitting up here to it's sitting up here yeah. till I could look at this man in the eye. I could look this man in the eye. By the time we was done with the last session, I could look this man in the eye. And th at this point, I got that pop against me, back to me now. Like, and I'm talking, I'm having, I mean, got that energy or whatnot. It's like, cause you, un you unloaded so much. And I didn't even realize all the stuff that I was unloading. Man, listen, I went, I remember I was, I went through a tough, period I, it was probably like 2000 Tysus, uh, trying to calculate my son's age as to the time when i was going through what i was going through but it was a real it was a real dark period of time and i'm talking about it seemed like for me i felt like the time was it felt like maybe two or three months but it was a real year a real year passed a whole year and during that time, and now I, in, tr in hindsight, I like, I look back on the events. I'm like, oh, I do remember that happened on New Year's Eve. I remember, you know, them, um, the different medications that I was, you know, trying and um, the different things that I was trying to figure out. But uh, I, I think ultimately for me, I remember I walked I, at the time, I was living on like Santa Monica and Brockton, like on the west side, right? Sort of near Interscope and all of that. And I remember a friend of mine came and took me to the beach. And then they left, actually. I was just like, yo, can you drop me off at the beach? And I took the stairs down and I walked to the edge of the ocean. And I'll never forget, I literally looked up in the air and I was like, I don't know what this is, but this don't belong to me. I got to give it back to the universe. And that was the start of me healing. Like, I think that's the other thing, like you say, unpacking. We hold on to so much, whether we would be cognizant of it or not. And we have to, um, we have to be willing to do the necessary work to keep ourselves here so we can be here for our children so we can be here for our community, so we can be here for our significant others, 
and also so that we can be uh, beacons for other people and everything. And that's the other thing. Yeah, sick. The beacon tattoo. Real talk. Because we, we're, uh, you know, because these conversations are very vulnerable. Like, I don't, I, I, we do this, and me personally, I do this to be of service. So I'm not going to be on here and not, I want to, I'm going to use my experience because it's easy to like point to someone else or point to other things because that makes it easy for us. We don't want to touch certain things, but I'm, I'm at a place where at my life that if you can hear what I'm saying and it is able to help you start to unravel some of these things and find, um, find peace or find the, the steps towards peace, then I'm all with it. And I think that's where, you know, humbly, that's where I think we should all be, you know. So I, I appreciate I appreciate you guys being so candid, transparent is a word that everybody's using now and, um, and sharing with us. And that's 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 all this about. I, I, I want us to, you know, even after this show, like, Man, that's the... I, I could go into a whole... Yeah, yeah, we, but we should. But that's the thing. The even after this... We should continue to fellowship or whatever you want to call it because people need our help. No, and we need, and we need and other people's help. Yeah, we, we need each other. other. Sure. We need each other. Like community is fucking so important. Yeah, it takes you know what I mean? It, it takes a community to raise a village. It takes a community to raise a man. Like you get to a certain point, you're like, oh man, like I got all the answers. No, you fucking don't. No. You don't never. never have all the answers. The will. moment you think that is the moment that you've cursed yourself. The moment that you think that, you've cursed yourself. We don't have all the answers. And you limit, and you limit yourself and you limit. from the potential that you yes. can go to. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Think of, think of those moments. I, I bet you got a moment where you were like, I'm so afraid of this. I'm so afraid of this. I'm so afraid of this. And then you went through the process. And you on the other side of it, and you like, that's all the fuck I had to do? Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. Every, as, every, Give everything. Give a moment, though. As, you got a Every moment. single thing I've done in life and been good at. Right? It's every single thing. I, yeah. I, I, each day, I have other things, of course, I want to accomplish. But yeah. for the things I have done, from doing a podcast, mm -hmm. even being like, oh, I got to do a podcast now. I want this podcast. It took me three years. My podcast partner asked me for three years to do on him. And I was like, bro, I ain't trying to get in the podcast space. Everybody the podcast. And then we did it. And it was really just a fear of mine. Just being like, you got to watch this thing on your own. Oh, motherfuckers don't care what you're talking about. What if it's not good? What if it's this? What is that? And then you, you, you do it. And you're like, what? Like, of course, I should have been doing this. This is, my, this is my truth. This is the, you know, it's the journey. It's what you're supposed to be going through and feeling. You should feel those things. And it's, it's the anxiety you feel because you care. You know what I'm saying? It's the anxiety that you feel about caring about anything. You it's want not because be you're vain. No. It's because you do care. Yeah, you care. Like, yo, I want to, I want to, that us, we were talking about it. I just, we want to add substance to the space. I'm not saying that other people don't. That, yeah. I would never say anything. I'm saying we want to make sure that that's what we do. Right. Authentically add substance to the space. If not, we're just, we're an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be an echo chamber. You know what I mean? And, you know, again, thank you guys for coming on here. Cause like, we talked to a bunch of people. They're gonna be a bunch of. They've been the past guests have been amazing. You guys are being amazing. But we always say like, um, I was talking to a record label, and I was just like, Yo, I want you to have a couple of guests on. Oh well, you know, they're not on album cycle. They don't have to be on album cycle. I'm not talking about the album. I'm not talking about the video. I'm not talking about yes. promo. I'm talking about life, and life is happening every day. Yeah. I don't need you to be on here because you dropping a single. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just going to say to me what you're going to say to the other yeah, the five, ten things that you're on prior to me or after me. And I don't need that. Yeah. What I want from you is your most authentic self when you're in between, when you're actually creating the art, because it's the moments in between where we're creating the art where we're the most open and free and like got these things going so again thank you guys so 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 much for joining us and uh let's let's if nothing else man uh, let's continue to like 
be here for each other, like conversate and talk to each other. That's 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 what we're doing this for again to build community. Love nah, it. I'm loving it. Like that's me, I do that all the time and like I like th these type of venues and events, event spaces, like for me, sharing your stories, like because people we all go through stuff, man. Yes. And we all got different stories. We all got different pathways. He went leap of faith. And look where he at now. Super leap of faith. Like <laughs> That's that's people need to hear that because there's so many more or less like him that holding on to that fear like man I don't know like we ain't talking about hooping or exactly. you talking about yo I'm going to what? Hollywood I'm going to L A to just see what the fuck is gonna happen well, exactly. I'm gonna make some shake the funniest right. thing is I would tell people in Chicago though. Yeah, I'm gonna be out there. I won't be back. I was talking shit, kinda. I was like, yeah, I'm about to move to LA, man, make it big. He's like, what you about to do out there? I'm like, I don't know yet. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. And I yeah. figure it out. <laughs> but nah, but those are the conversations that help that somebody at the crib, and I read the comments that, you know, when we post these things, and there's always a ton of comments of people saying, I needed this conversation. And it's important, it's, it's, it's one thing to hear it from like family members and those things, but I think for, a lot of the youth and other people to hear from people that they respect and they've seen their accomplishment to peel back the curtain a little bit to be like yo they went through the same thing a lot of the same things you they might be going through going. and yeah. you keep going. Keep like, going like every year I, I do my, my thing since i started um like giving back i got my foundation allergic to failure allergic to failure that's okay. my life mantra like because everything that i went through has prepared me for the step, next step. You're not gonna figure it out. I literally, from high school, middle school, high school, college, they all, I've only heard, you can't, you won't, you're not good enough. You're not gonna last. I'm the first to graduate. I graduated high school. First to graduate no. in your family? No, 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 I'm just saying, I graduated okay. high school. People, okay. people told me I wasn't gonna graduate. Okay. I'm the first to graduate college in my family. I set the standard for my brothers. Both of my, all both of my brothers, HBCU graduates. One has his master's. Others working on his master's. Year 10 in the league. These people told me I wouldn't even sit up here and make it a season. 10 years. And now to be one of the most sought out players for the last five years. Every team said they could use a guy like me on their team. And I literally could go anywhere and fit any system. Mm -hmm. The same player that they said that doesn't have a position. Now what is the NBA? Positionless. <laughs> <laughs> right? Crazy. Positionless. Right? So it's about staying consistent and just keep and believing. With, keep believing and keep, keep working. Because mm -hmm. now, small ball center. Mm -hmm. I ain't played center since I was high school. My freshman year. Sophomore year, I'm sorry, and I moved to forward. Then when I got to college, I played the four or five at times, depending on what lineup we went to. But I mostly played the four. The three, the, I played two through four in the first year. Then I went to five my freshman year because my coach kicked our whole junior class off the team because they broke team rules. Like, people don't understand, it's, it's layers to the story, it's layers. And I share these with kids back home that Bro, it don't matter your circumstance. I grew up in the same environment as y'all. I grew up in the same environment. You dictate your future. Your environment doesn't dictate your future. Like I said, with that kid that got shot five times, we sat after my camp for four hours talking to this kid. Not just me, but all my homies. And everybody was like, my brother told him flat out, look, either you gonna get with it or you gonna get down. One of the two. You gonna be persistent in this? Where you gonna get down? One of the two. Ain't no all listen to all this stuff. Bro, either you gonna do it or you're not gonna do it. You gonna sit up here and, and take the initiative. You can't let your circumstances. Okay, your mom ain't work. Your mom this and that. You ain't gotta go be in the streets to sit up here and go fucking make some money. Go get a job. Use basketball as a tool. Use it as a tool. Get your grades up. Go to college. You can go make some money overseas. It might it's gonna it's sacrifices that you gotta take. It's sacrifices, because literally everybody sit up and be like, man, you went to college, isn't it? I ain't never worked a day in my life. I ain't never had a job, and I ain't have it like that. 
my other homeboys, they get per diem. They get the what's the name? The what's what's the checks that they get uh, from from school? The uh, um, right now. The, the not a, yeah when they get the uh, the stipend. Yeah, the stipend checks. I ain't getting none of that. My parents made too much money. So I didn't get the fruits of give, the school giving me back money. I literally got all that stuff from my family. So I had to learn how to appreciate what I have. And I sit up and tell kids all the time, it don't matter about how much you have. It's about what you do with what you have. That's what matters the most. Because literally I'm in this position, but I still act like I don't have it like that. It's that humbleness that's in me that's been instilled from my parents, my grandparents. Because it's longevity, you want this to last. You don't want to just live in it right now because it's going to run out at some point. This 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 window that I have, it's going to run out at some point. Mm -hmm. But what do you do within that window? I don't know if it runs out. I think that I think it it'll, it'll run out if we don't figure out a way to reinvent yourself or just pivot. No, I'm talking. I'm, ta yeah. you know, I'm talking about what the what way. Saying, of, I'm talking like, about the way of playing. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, the yeah, playing yeah. aspect. But then the outside, next yeah. the next phase is what you take into accountability because. Yeah. That's where a lot of people go wrong at. You sit up here and you play basketball well, for this amount of time. Well, telling us we got to rap. He looking like you got to rap. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> One thing before we go. The word is legacy. What does it mean to you? Give us a couple. Legacy. Oh, uh, it means my name. And, you know, and that's everything to me, my name. Legacy to me is your purpose and what you do with it. <laughs> <laughs> legacy is... Uh, Wow. Legacy for me is actually, I just, I want, I want my children and my family, you know, everybody, my wife, I want them to know that, well, they do know, I, I, I want them to know I, I, I put it all on the line, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For the betterment of not just myself, but a community like a community, the betterment of the community. If that is, if, the, if people see in me that, yo, he, it was about more than him. That, that should be, that's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want it to be, yeah. it's about more than me. Yeah, I think it's a combination of all those things because I think when you think of legacy, it's when your name is brought up, what do people say about yeah, you? For sure. Whether you're alive or dead, in the room or out the room, that's, that's what legacy is, right? There it is. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, Sweet life. Steve Lowe.